sit comfortably adat namaskaram ipra our salutations to sage patanjali yoge na chittasya padena vacha malam sharirasya cha vaidyakena yo pa karo tam pravaram munina patanjalim pranjali ranatosmi we offer our salutations to the sage patanjali who gave us yoga for purification of the chitta vyakarana for purification of the speech and ayurveda for purification of the body om shanti 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 dear friends we are in second chapter of patanjali's yoga sutra and in the last class we had a discussion on understanding the kleshas we discussed all the five kleshas up to abhinivesha right yes so 2.9 swar savahi vidusho api tatha arudo abhinivesha so patanjali does not directly describe abhinivesha here he just gives a clue saying that uh swar savahi it means that it is something which is there inherent as a quality in all the living beings very deep inside abhinivesh means something that has gone or invested very deep into the system hmm? vidusho api tatha arudo he says that um even the learned men you know who are evolved in yoga also are not free from this klesha so by this patanjali means that you may you know become aware of your raga dvesha you may be able to manage them better but this abhinivesh is quite deep and even when you have you are learned you know that kind of a this klesha remains very deep hmm? and this is how this is how he he just uh, defines abhinivesh so directly patanjali does not say that abhinivesh is fear of death it is in the shloka it is not there says that it is there in deeply seated inside the living body and uh, even when you become learned it is the most difficult thing to get rid of so by that way people have applied logic and tried to put that okay after ragadvesh there is abhinivesh which is that the attachment that we hold to our own prana our own life Hmm? now after describing that patanjali says in 2.10 te prati prasava heyaha sukshmaha <coughs> hmm? now this is this can be considered as the very core of the whole of the patanjali's yoga sutras hmm? so what he is saying here is these kleshas when they become sukshma first they have to be made milder you know that these manifest in three ways you know prasutta tanu and vichinna udara udar udar prasutta tanu and vichinna these are the manifestation of these kleshas that he says that all of them should become tanu all of them should become first sukshma and after they became sukshma they become sukshma you can completely reverse them you can completely cause involution of these kleshas by a process which he describes as as prati prasava hmm? so we have to put more thought onto you can put more thought onto what is this prati prasava any idea in patanjali yoga sutra this this word prati prasava comes anywhere else yes, 
heard it before that um like if we break it down, prati is reverse and prasava means creation. So it's going back to our original state. So prati prasava means that you uh, are doing the reverse of creation, reverse involution. That is what it means. So my question is whether in Patanjali Yoga Sutra you hear this word Prati Prasava anywhere else. Prati Prasava once comes in 2.10. For the Kleshas, he says, Te Prati Prasava Heyaha Sukshmaha. Any other sutra you remember? Prati Prasava word? The very last sutra of Patanjali Yoga Sutra you remember? So it says, Purusharth Shunyanam, Punanam Prati Prasavaha. Hmm? And then, Sarupa Pratishtha Va Chiti Shakta Riti Kaivalyam. So when he defines Kaivalya, the ultimate state where the components of consciousness and matter have separated, hmm? the Purusha and Prakriti have separated. In that he says, Gunanam Prati Prasava. Purushartha Nunyanam. Hmm? So, what does it mean? Gunas, fundamentally telling you there are Bhutas, there is Indriya, Yanindriyas, Karmendriyas. Then there is Ataha Karan Chatushti, that is Mana, Buddhi, Chitta, and Ahankar. All these domains from the stool to sukshma to karana. Hmm? We can say that it is the stool prakriti, then mahat prakriti, and then the karan prakriti. All the domains that you see here, Patanjali calls this uh, uh, sukshma aspects as uh, linga and alinga also. Puna parvani, that vishesha. So, so, prakriti in all the domains that you can see from the gross that you see the Panchamahabhutas, then you see the Panchatanmatras, the Roop, Ras, Gandh, smell, taste and all that. They are subtler aspects. Then there are aspects of perception, memory, you know, and feelings that are associated with it. And the very core, the very I-ness that is there. Hmm? All these domains of the prakriti are filled with only gunas and nothing else. This is all manifestation of gunas which are always in a state of parinama. Hmm? Parinama is a change that is happening in gunas. So, by Pratiprasava, Patanjali is talking about the reverse process of the way in which this Purusha and Prakriti have got together now it is going to get reversed. Hmm? Fundamentally, when he says about Prati Prasava, he is talking about the Chitta. The Chitta, having served its purpose, is dissolved into its own origin. Hmm? So how does this Prati Prasava happen? First, first and foremost thing, you know, if you are reading Patanjali Yoga Sutra, one thing that you have to understand hmm, is what is chitta? Till you don't understand the tattva or the structure of chitta, this sutra you will never be able to understand. Hmm? Patanjali says, chitta vritti nirodha yoga. Chitta is the central. In all the chapters everywhere, Patanjali will bring chitta. Even the definition of kaivalya Chitta Shakti Riti, the observer of the Chitta, is established in his own Swarupa. Correct? And further, as we go into this learning of the, of the Sutras, Chitta's understanding becomes very important. Hmm? So, you are all students of yoga. I would like to hear from you. No? Question, my question will be very specific. <coughs> chitta is having a separate entity, separate from Purusha and Prakriti or not? This is one question. And then what is the 
what is the structure of chitta or what is the essence of what is chitta hmm? anyone would like to say what is chitta hmm? who say okay. it's mind sir. mind so you are saying another word in english hmm? so there is shabda artha and jnana patanjali says three aspects are there one is shabda second is artha of that shabda and third is jnana of the substance that shabda represents when these three you are able to split together and do samyama on this split in third chapter patanjali says by doing that sarva all the bhutas all the uh, uh, in the creation all the creatures that are there you will understand their language he says you will understand the language of all the creatures if you do samyama on the difference between shabda artha and jnana now what you have uttered is a shabda m i n d mind hmm? now you have to tell me the artha hmm? and then tell me the jnana actually what are you talking about first what artha do you, you understand when you say mind so if patanjali was sitting in front of you he would have counter question like this so when you say you have to think of these three aspects shabda artha and jnana and then try your best to talk about the jnana of the shabda hmm? very good now this brings us to a very very important discussion that which has chetana is chitta hmm? chetana means what from the aspect of purusha and prakriti can you tell because that all of us understand what is chetana according to concept of sankhya purusha and prakriti ah, prakriti uh, prakriti sadhanga chetana so chetana is a part of prakriti or purusha chetana is a quality of purusha or prakriti <laughs> purusha purusha so you mean to say chitta is purusha what is chitta i think we have some smart students online also please unmute and tell question is very specific what is chitta Uh, sir chitta is composite mind uh, it is made up of prakruti as well as purusha purusha is the part which gives intelligence and perception and all other things like memory analysis and all are part of prakruti how many of you agree with the definition given by shreyas one sir I... you agree yes. anybody else who agrees kila why you don't agree the chitta okay okay but you agree chitta is a part of both purusha and prakriti patanjali when you read further is very clear the chitta belongs to prakriti only hmm? chitta belongs to prakriti only chitta is made up of gunas and it is the gunas pratiprasava which is happening so chitta pratiprasava also happen the chitta disappears in kavalya sthiti hmm? so first you have to understand he says purushartha shunyanam hmm? purushartha means the artha for the purusha whatever purpose this chitta and this gunas had towards the purusha that having fulfilled purusharth shunyanam gunanam pratiprasavah and pratiprasava when it is happening for the chitta hmm? if you read patanjali yoga sutra properly it starts from the third chapter hmm? he says third chapter begins with the definition of धारण 
Her chapter begins with the definition of dharana. Desha bandha chittasya dharana. Then it comes up to dhyana, samadhi, samyama. And after that, Patanjali gets into the domains of how the involution of chitta happens. And he tells that the, the involution of chitta happens in three stages. Parinamas. Okay. First, he talks about samadhi parinam, then ekagrata parinam, and then talks about the this nirodha parinam is what he is talking about chitta vritti nirodha as a definition of you. Everybody nirodha also we have our own definition but this nirodha is nirodha parinam that he is talking in the third chapter. You should read. You should read about these three parinam. But in essence, I can tell you, the, the initial stage of chitta is that it is filled with vrittis. Now, what is chitta vritti? And what is chitta? First, very clear thing, chitta belongs to prakriti. Okay? But, there is another thing. The nature of chitta is, that it is, when purified, it becomes like a sphatic mani. Sphatic mani, is like a, a pearl which is completely transparent and glowing. On whichever surface you keep it, it takes that color, that shape. You keep it on white cloth, it becomes completely white and shiny. Hmm? So that is the property of chitta. Hmm? But it also has another nature of taking an alambana. It, because it, in, in it itself, it is completely transparent. It always looks forward to take some support, some alambana, something to reflect on. Okay, so when this this chitta either can look inwards to reflect the purusha, see when the sphatic money reflects the sun, it is sun. We can say that it is shining like sun only. It is sun only because the whole sun can reflect can reflect itself on the sphatic money, correct? But if the sun is clouded, then it will reflect uh, whatever surface that it is on, correct? So on one side, all the, uh, the your indriyas, their vishayas, whatever sense organs are perceiving is falling on the chitta. On other side, the samskaras which are deep rooted within, the, the very surface on which the chitta is lying, that also wants to reflect itself. And the third aspect is that there may be some sun rays of the purusha falling on it and that also it is reflecting. So chitta is a sphatic money which at any moment of time is reflecting three things. One is the surface on which it is lying, which are the deep samskaras. Samskaras are nothing but karmashayas. Whatever karmas that you have done, Patanjali says samskara, the nature of samskara is same as smriti. Correct? What is smriti? Anubhuta vishaya asampramoshaha smriti. You have experienced something, but when you were experiencing it, you had the glue of raga and dvesha within you. And therefore, whatever you experience, a part of that stuck onto your asmita. Asmita is subtler than the chitta. Asmita is subtler than the chitta. So therefore, whatever that the chitta is lying on a table or a, or a cloth, that cloth, whatever colors it will have, it will come on the chitta. That is samskara. Second, it is also reflecting whatever that is moving around it. Whatever that the senses are perceiving. Now I am seeing you, I am talking, I am doing this, you are perceiving me. If the reflection is falling on the chitta. Correct? And the third aspect is the aspect that she is told as chetana. Because it it is it, it takes the shape of the buddhi, you know, because of that chetana. But it is not the part of purusha. We can't say that the money is sun. Sun doesn't even know that there is any money that exists. Correct? But yes. When, when, the, when the money is completely pure, it is as good as sun. It can reflect that light which is there. But it belongs to Prakriti. Fine. So this is the nature of Chitta. Chitta also is Samhartya. That is, it has an ability to work together with other elements that are there. So Chitta works together with the Buddhi. Chitta works together with the Indriyas. Chitta works together 
with the memories that are there, the samskaras that are there. So all the faculties of a human being that are there within, everything is connected to the chitta. Hmm? So you can imagine a, a nice fatigue money which is there right in the core. Hmm? And in that core, in that core, you uh, you uh, you can say that this chitta can be in a state of vikshipta. Hmm? When the chitta is vikshipta, then the reflection of the purusha in it, the buddhi in it, is almost negligible. And it is having varied amount of colorings, very intense kind of colorings. And most of its colorings are coming from the samskaras. Okay, which are not even allowing it to remain in the present moment. So even the whatever is moving around the chitta, it is also has a cutting off from the reality. You're not even able to reflect the reality, not even able to reflect the purusha, but it has become a complete instrument of reflecting only the regurgitations of the samskaras. Say you keep it on a black cloth. And that color itself is so intense that nothing else will be able to reflect it, it will appear black. So if the samskaras are very strong and their coloring is very deep, then the chitta loses the capability of not only reflecting the purusha, but also being able to reflect what is there in front as it is. Now if it is on a yellow cloth, even if the outside things are red and white, everything get a... <clears throat> yellowish tinge to it, then this chitta is having a, a vritti of viparyaya. Hmm? So the color that the chitta takes, the impression that the chitta takes, that is known as chitta vritti. And the whole journey of yoga is, there should be such nirodha of the vrittis on the chitta. First, through pratyahara, you stop the vrittis coming from outside. But then, through this Pratiprasava, you stop the vrittis that are coming from within the samskaras also. Temporarily, if you are able to clear off, you know, temporarily, you are able to put up a white cloth and put the chitta there and you get a shine, nice shine and chitta only reflects one object, which is the whiteness and the purusha. Then it is Tadevatra Marth Nirbhasam Swarupa Shunyam Uda Samadhi. So chitta temporarily became pure, though deep within the white cloth there are many clothes which are still there, but you have temporarily been able to put up a white cloth and it is only reflecting one substance. Then dharana dhyana samadhi, your chitta has reached samadhi parinam. So from the vikshipta sthiti, you come to samadhi parinam. But that is temporary. Okay? Then slowly, slowly, slowly by practicing that samadhi parinama, slowly you pull away the white cloth. Okay? And the chitta in its purity develops such a property that even if it is lying on a different surface, it is able to reflect the purusha more intensely and the coloration that is there below that, a different kind of color, because it has practiced so much with white cloth. In, in Samadhi Parinama, the, you will see that the person will not be able to do anything else. He will be in a state of catatonia. His body will become still, breath will become very slow. And you can visibly see that he is in a trance-like kind of a state. But slowly, slowly, person will say that, okay, let my chitta reflect people around, but inside let me be in the state of Samadhi. So superficially, chitta will start reflecting things and the Kshayo Dayo, two kind of things come, no? Shaya is one vritti coming down. Udaya is another vritti coming up. So in Samadhi Parinama, what happens is, there is Shaya of Sarvartham. Sarvartham means all the different kind of sensory perception that were falling on the chitta, that is removed. Okay? And the samskaras also temporarily do not reflect on it. And it gets into a state where it is only reflecting the purusha for a while. It doesn't sustain for long, it goes away and then uh, it gets into again the mundane routine of reflecting everything. But as that uh, with sadhana, that samadhi parinama becomes deeper, 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 more and more strong, more and more strong, 
the default mode of chitta starts changing. And now, because chitta needs some alambana, it cannot be without alambana. Either it needs the sensory perception or it has to have its samskaras of what you have experienced or what you want to imagine or it wants purusha. So slowly from the alambana of samskara and the sensory perception, chitta changes its default mode of holding on to the purusha. And then it, it reaches the second step of involution, which is known as ekagrata parina. In ekagrata parina, what happens is, even if chitta is going around and talking around and, and reflecting many things, they are still very mild. And still the glow of the purusha only is intense. So even if vrittis come and go in this state, they say that shaya and udaya becomes tulya. Both become balanced. So whether some vritti is coming or some vritti is going, Chitta is able to maintain the connection with Purusha at all the time. Okay? Then the Chitta reaches the second step, step of Prati Prasava, which is known as Ekagrata Parinam. And then comes the third state. When, when, Pur, when the Chitta gets into a state of Ekagrata Parinam, then it reaches a state which is known as Vivek Prag Bharam, Kaivalya Vimukh. Hmm? That state of Chitta is known as Viveka Pragbharam. So Viveka Nimnam Kaivalya Pragbharam. Hmm? In fourth chapter he says. Now what has happened is Chitta has become pregnant with immense knowledge. Viveka. Okay. And also it is now starting to look towards a state of Kaivalya. That is in Ekagrata Parana. It can sense its complete freedom and also gets filled with a knowledge which is not just grasped by the senses. It is a knowledge that is that comes from the whole holistic perception of the whole creation, of the very purpose of creation. From Viveka Nimnam, Jhuka Hua Gyan, and Kaivalya Pragbharam, then from deeper analysis of that he says, Krama. Krama is the moment-to-moment -moment change that is happening in the Parinamas. No? Every moment, there are some gunas are coming up, some gunas are going down. Chitta becomes such an objective observer of them. And another thing that comes here is Para Vairagya. Hmm? Till now, Vairagya was going on. Then comes a state of Para Vairagya. In Para Vairagya, what happens? There is vairagya towards the viveka also. This jnana, this viveka, everything appears, appears is this. When there is a vairagya to rutambhara pradnya, hmm? then whatever one knows becomes very alpa. And the jnana expands to infinite. The whole creation, the whole universe becomes very small and there is an infinite, unimaginable kind of expansion that takes place of the chitta. And it's here that um, the chitta becomes so thin, so thin, so expanded that it is almost nothing. Hmm? And then dawns which samadhi, after getting vairagya towards even the Ritambara Padnya, then which samadhi comes? Which samadhi comes when an individual develops vairagya to viveka? First, Ashtanga Yoga was for viveka khyati. Hmm? Then he reached the state of samadhi pradnya. But then he moves to ekagrata parinama. Then he moves to nirodha parinama. Between Ekagrata Parinama and Nirodha Parinama, there is Vivek Pradbharam, Vivek Nimnam, and Vairagya, then Rutambara Pradnya dawns, then he develops Vairagya to Rutambara Pradnya. Rutambara Pradnya knows each and everything of everything. Not as a concept, but literally. Literally knows every substance of everything. That also he develops Vairagya. Then dawns which Samadhi. Anyone online? Nirbija Samadhi is just before Kaivalya. 
there is nirodha parina it is one samadhi in between super dharma mega samadhi so dharma mega samadhi comes and when that comes after that chitta gets such kind of an expansion that whatever is known becomes alpa even one knows everything that becomes a minute specule of the universe see can you imagine a state of a chitta where the chitta knows everything everything of everything okay before dharma mega samadhi that appears a huge thing that i know everything of everything after dharma mega samadhi that whatever the chitta knows which is sarvajnya becomes a speckle and it expands it is a blast continuous then there is prati prasava whatever that one minuscule of gunas that is their play that was left that also is dropped what is it only swarupa pratishtha this is kaivalya okay so in a way i have explained to you what happens in third and fourth chapters also we will go more step by step but this is the way when patanjali says te prati prasava heyaha sukshma so from the from the kleshas you have to begin your journey first and foremost thing is whether i am able to identify the kesh self awareness is the key yoga is all about self aware so what is chitta what are the vrittis and vrittis are whatever the chitta reflects except purusha is a vritti even nidra is a vritti because at that time also there is reflection of nidra on the chitta it is transparent so not projecting anything also is a reflection on chitta hmm? so therefore viparyaya is a separate shade that is reflecting even the pramana that's why you know i ask people how is pramana a vritti people get very confused yoga is all about being in the present moment but but for chitta it is very clear no chitta is reflecting what is outside so it is indriya reflection that's why it is a vritti and if you are not even able to reflect your indriyas as it is what your indriyas are showing and you have your own yellow shade from your samskaras then it is viparyaya if your samskaras become so intense you are not even able to reflect what indriyas are showing then it becomes vikalpa or if your samskaras only show you a flashback and that only keeps playing on that money and it is smriti or it's not projecting anything but not the purusha also and nidra so the definition of vritti is whatever the chitta reflects except purusha that everything is called as chitta vritti and yoga is the process of chitta vritti nirodha it means you do not want even the sleep to be projected on your chitta you do not want jagrat avastha to be projected on your chitta you do not want your samskaras to be projected on chitta you want your chitta to project the infinite the ishvara the, the, the purusha which is kaivalya kind of things okay so prati prasava means that whatever purpose that chitta had what what purpose did chitta have what is the purpose of chitta purusharth shunya naam de se no the, the purpose of the purusha of the chitta toward the purusha is over right so what is the purpose of the chitta to reflect its own nature it depends you know depends on the state of vairagya if the state of vairagya is low then the chitta is a, an object to to facilitate bhoga right 
So then whatever that are unfulfilled desires of the Purusha, they have to keep reflecting. The Chitta has to keep reflecting that and, and the Bhoga cannot happen if the Chitta interface is not there. Hmm? So some people, you know, tend to say that Chitta only exists everywhere. There is nothing else. But that is not true. It is not true because every individual has a different Chitta, but the object is only one. And that same object is reflected on all the Chittas. So if even if my chitta is purified and I do not perceive any object, I only perceive purusha, for her the object exists. So, so chitta for a for a purusha which is still in the in the uh, outwardly turned, then for that the chitta becomes an object of fulfilling the bhogas. Whereas the the, the purusha when he starts getting into a state of vairagya, not purusha but the jiva, which has the uh, chitta, then it starts getting uh, fed up with these gunas and their place more and more, more and more, and reaches a state where it does not want any of the gunas developed a complete satiety. Then this chitta becomes an instrument for apuvarga. So, bhog apuvargartham purusham. That is the whole purpose of the prakriti, either for the bhoga. After bhoga, what comes? Upwarga only comes. Correct? So, in that way, in Kaivalya Sthiti, Chitta has fulfilled the purpose of bhoga till now and then the purpose of Upwarga also. Hmm? This is Pratiprasava. Then comes 2.11 Dhyana Heyas Tad Vrittayaha. Then another way of uh, reducing the intensity of these uh, uh, kleshas, kleshas that are playing in the mind, the kleshas of Raga, Dvesha, Abhinivesha, Asmita, you can reduce that by jnana. So Pratiprasava, your ultimate aim of Pratiprasava is Kaivalya. But what is it that you can do right now is Dhyana. So begin with Dhyana. And bring the klesha into a state of tanu, that is sukshma. Hmm? So here Patanjali is actually telling us a topic of research. Hmm? He says that by doing meditation, attachment and aversions can be thinned out. Clearly telling it. Hmm? And then that way, meditation becomes a therapeutic agency for all psychiatric disorders because all psychiatric disorders are nothing but kleshas. And he says that that can be thinned out by dhyana. And what is dhyana? What is the definition of dhyana? dhyana. So, any pratyaya that is there on the chitta, any thing that the chitta is reflecting, just try to keep it for a long time. Whether it is the sound of home, whether it is an image of uh, your deity, or a feeling that you are getting, a feeling of devotion, or even, you know, Patanjali says that the whatever way that you want to do the dhyana, the dhyana, according to Patanjali, means only one thing. Your chitta in its default state is in a vikshipta state, it is sarvartham. It means it keeps on reflecting everything. What you perceive, what you think about it and the push. Correct? He says, first and foremost, your effort should be that let my chitta reflect only one. If Purusha you can't perceive, find out one object, which is there outside. But if you look at the object, you know, then your Indriyas are drawn out. What you have to do is, you have to keep the reflection of that object in your chitta for a long time. Because before dhyana, pratyahara has already happened. Yama niyama, asana pranayama, then pratyahara. In pratyahara, your eyes are already closed. So when you say that I am doing a trataka, and you say that it is a meditation, is trataka a meditation? How many agree? Raise your hand. Looking at a candle flame with unwavering gaze, is it meditation or not? Madam, is it dhyana or not? It is. It is dhyana. 
Why it is there? Is there? Why it is not a dhyana? It is a kriya. Why it is not a dhyana? Because they are perceiving. So, so in Trataka, still Pratyahara has not happened. Swa Swa Vishaye. All the Vishayas say you take your Indriyas out. Right? So here your Indriya of I is, is on its Vishaya of object. So Trataka can be considered as a Kriya. That is what Hatha Yoga texts also say. And Kriya is done even before Asanas. To stabilize the Asana. So those who can't sit still in an Asana, they do Trataka first. Then becoming stable in the Asana, they do Pranayama. After pranayama, they close their eyes. And then get one pratyaya. Either it is sound of home or it is an image or your japa, whatever. Hmm? Shane shane ruparame the buddhya. By the buddhi, hold on to your mind and keep only one object on the chitta. The longer you can keep that one object, on the chitta, you are getting into meditation. But that is dharana, right? Hmm? It should be dharana. Desha bandha chitta se dhara. So in the beginning, in the pratyahara, in the beginning you will require effort. You have to keep on doing your japa or keep on bringing that particular image or sound into your mind again and again. But what I am doing is, there are many vrittis that are falling on my chitta. I want to voluntarily bring my own vritti which I want on my chitta and want to keep it as long as possible. Hmm? So, this state in the beginning done with effort, chitta has by default will reflect its samskaras, what it perceives, but I will again and again break that, keep it away and put my own vritti there. Only one vritti. So, this one vritti of the chitta, desha bandha chitta dharana, this desha, is now not in outer space. This desha is in inner space. There, if you are able to keep your chitta in the beginning with effort, that is dharma. Slowly, slowly, as you keep on practicing that, practicing that, practicing that, you get into a state where chitta then starts keeping it. Even if you drop the effort, chitta only reflects your Krishna's idol. Nothing else. Initially, you brought it, brought it, or a feet of your guru, or your mantra, initially you brought it, brought it, brought it. Then after that, like you, you teach the cycling to a child. Initially you hold, hold, hold and take. After the child starts going, in between you start leaving the child, it still keeps cycling. Then again as it is going to fall, you hold it. In the same way, the chitta is slowly, slowly, slowly trained. And then when a state comes that chitta has learned cycling. You give the pratyaya and chitta keeps it. Longer and longer and longer and longer. Then, that is according to Patanjali, meditation. Hmm? And when it does that, then Chitta automatically is reflecting something neutral. That reflection of something neutral or something that is associated with Purusha will naturally start a tendency of the Chitta to reflect the Purusha more. Because the Pratyaya that you put is associated with the Purusha. So slowly, slowly, slowly what happens is the, the samskaras and whatever the chitta perceives, its ashaya, karmashaya starts getting thin out and the, the grip of raga and dvesha starts reducing. That is what he is saying. Dhyanas, dhyana heyas tad vrittayah. Those vrittis of the chitta should initially be thinned out. You cannot directly remove them, wipe them out. It is a very systematic process that takes years together. But in the beginning, all of us should find out a separate time, should bring one pratyaya to our mind and start the process of pratyahara and dharana. If you are not even able to do pratyahara, then do trataka, then do sit in asana, then do some pranayama and then do pratyahara. Okay? But without that, these people say, no, I sit and uh, mindfulness, you know, just observe your breath and then uh, remain with the breath. 
you know so here even if the breath is a pratyaya that uh, the the mind is focusing on it is not complete pratyahar you are still drawn out you understand in fact this is still at the level of pranayama what people call as mindfulness meditation has not crossed the level of even pranayama because shwasa prashwasa gatir vichhedah prana is after that pratya pratyahara means like a tortoise withdraws all its organs into the shell you have drawn all your organs into the heart and even the observer of the breath is not pratyahara because here also you are somewhere drawn out so you move from that also but in the beginning it is a good preparation for pratyahara so people observe the breaths and even in vipassana when they tell you to observe the sensations that also will fall somewhere between pranayama and pratyahara okay because dharana dhyana and samadhi are completely antaranga yog they have nothing to do with any sensation of the body any sensation outside or any observation of the breath it is completely a phenomena of mental space so then if you are able to do dhyana in this way what patanjali says there if you do like that then over a period of time your kleshas will start thinning out which will make a preparation for samadhi avastha to come then when samadhi what is samadhi samadhi is that on the pratyaya that you have your chitta was able to keep it itself there comes a moment when even you forget yourself here still in the state of dhyana there is pratyaya and there is a observer of the pratyaya i am observing my deity but as you continue 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 in dhyana you get into a state where you are not there only the pratyaya is there that is the purification of chitta that happens then you are getting into samadhi parinama and then when you move from samadhi parinama to ekagrata parinama then even if you are doing all the outwardly activities somewhere in your chitta it is continuously reflecting your pratyaya that you have put so in inside there is a japa that is going on and outside you are doing all your activities so that smriti of samadhi remains that state remains and you slowly slowly learn the next step that you can do all your activities also but still do not get disturbed in your samadhi sthiti and continue that once you follow that for even that for a considerable amount of time ekagrata parinama then there is dawn of knowledge upon you which is viveka nimna kaivalya pragbharam then one develops natural attachment because secrets of the natures are revealed to you all the secrets so in the initial phases like a child gets a new toy it wants to explore you explore keep playing keep playing keep playing with it and then finally in after playing it enough you say that okay even this uh, i don't want what is there even if i know everything everything is nothing but these gunas prakasha sthiti and kriya it is nothing else hmm? so with that vairagya comes dharma mega samadhi whatever you know becomes very alpha and then leave that also and expand so you say purusharth shunyanam gunanam prati prasavah swarup pratishtha va chiti shakte iti now the, the very observer of chitta from the beginning is now established in swarup pratishtha gunas purpose has been done chitta's purpose has been done so chitta becomes so thinned out so expanded that chitta becomes nothing this is known as prati prasava the gunas become not have any play and this is how we move further we will discuss any questions any questions
Okay, actually, after this, it will be that second to the Samadhi Bhavanartha. Huh? Samadhi Bhavanartha, Klesha Tanu Karanartha, Shcha Kriya Yoga. The Kriya Yoga of Swadhyaya. Tapas, Ishwar Vidhana is for Klesha Tanu and Samadhi Bhavana. And in that once following this kind of lifestyle, that is a daily lifestyle. Along with it, you have to find out a separate time for doing Pratyahara Dharana Dhyana. Hmm? Then it will be drastic thinning of the Kleshas. Once that happens, you will start getting glimpses of Samadhi. You will start getting into that zone. Hmm? Why to get into all that? Because Later, Viveka is waiting for. Viveka uh, is something all of us fundamentally have a desire of knowing the secrets of this existence and purpose of our existence. So that will come when we are able to get into the state of Samadhi. Hmm? Now with this kind of an understanding, it will be very easy to go through the second and third chapters. Okay? At the same position. Yoga na chittasya bade na vacha malam shari rasya chavai dyake na yoga karotam pravaram molina patanjalim pranjaliran atosmi. Om Shanti Shanti Shanti. So here also he says Yogena. 